I really don't know what's wrong with me, but yeah, this one was June. <sighs> Book 14. In the Chronicles of St Mary's by Jodie Taylor. Taylor. The good, the bad and the history. Great title, isn't it? St Mary's is under investigation. Their director has been shot and Max is number one suspect. Can things get any worse? Well, we all know the answer to that one. Max needs to get away fast. And a brilliant le idea leads her to a full-scale uprising in 20th century China. If she can come by an historical treasure or two in the process even better, that is if she makes it out alive. Then there's the small matter of insight, the sinister organisation from the future hell bent on changing history for their own dark ends. Having successfully infiltrated their ranks, Max is perfectly placed to stop them, but she knows her cover will soon be blown, because it's already happened. Can Max down take, take down insight before they come after her? The circle is closing and only one can survive. I love this series. I am not going to lie. This is my favourite. I love them. Okay, then of course, June saw the publication of Icon, uh, What Killed Marilyn Monroe, Volume 2. I'm not going to read the back because it's the same as Volume 1, which you can see in May's uh, t uh, book haul. Uh, it just uh, tells the story of, uh, continues the story of the conspiracy theories after Marilyn's death and who was responsible for said conspiracy theories. This um, volume looks in depth at her alleged relationships with the Kennedys whether or not it's possible it was suicide, there's documents, we've got things about uh, Frank Capel, Rob Slate, Sir William Fowler, the eyewitness neighbour who allegedly is claimed to have seen um, Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy arriving the night, the day of her death. Jack Clemens, the first officer on the scene, big chapters on them. Lionel Granderson, the guy who signed the death certificate. Um, and then we've got three separate chapters on various coroners and forensic pathologist including Dr Thomas Noguchi who was the coroner who did her autopsy and then two very well renowned ones Dr Boyd Stevens and Cyril Wecht um, who is very famous he's talked about Marilyn and Elvis uh, uh, not together obviously then there's chapters on um, bipolar disorder borderline personality disorder Marilyn's psychiatric and psychosocial history so you know things that she did like I said, the Kennedys documented meetings and rumours and then the FBI files on Marilyn when she was in Mexico, um, the alleged confiscation of her telephone records and so on and so on. So it is, if you're a Marilyn fan, whether or not you believe she was murdered or not, it's worth reading. There's so much evidence in it. It's very sad to read. I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll admit this, but I, I think I know a lot more about her her mental state now than I did before thanks to Gary um it makes me love her even more it makes me wish that she was here so I could give her a big hug even though she's been 97 this year um I wish she could have been happier uh, but it's, it's you've got to get this book it's just so good okay I had two other books of for my birthday from Paul's mum I got Murder Before Evening Song which is by the Reverend Richard Coles who of course was in the communards Back in the 80s. Uh, so this one says Canon Daniel Clement is rector of Champton where he lives alongside his withered mo widowed mother, opinionated, fearless, ever so slightly annoying Audrey and his two Dashens, Cosmo and Hilda. When Daniel announces a plan to install a lavatory in the church the parish is suddenly and unexpectedly divided, threatening to destroy the apparent calm of the village and then Anthony Bowness, cousin to Bernard de Flores, patron of Champton, is found dead at the back of the church. As the police move in and the bodies start piling up, Daniel is the only one who can try and keep his community together and catch a killer. That sounds good. And she gave me another one by the Rev Richard Coles, which is A Death in the Parish. I love this cover. Now I am actually going to have to read from the inside because it's the hardback, so the blurbs inside are not on the back. It's been a few months since the murder tore the community of Chumpton apart. As Canon Daniel Clement tries to steady his flock, the parish is joined with Upper and Lower ba Bad Saddle, bringing a new tide of unwanted change. But church politics soon become the least of Daniel's problems. His mother, headstrong, fearless Audrey, is obviously up to something, something she's determined to keep from him, and she's not the only one. And then all hell breaks loose when a murder returns to Champton in the form of a shocking, a ritualistic 
killing. Now that sounds rather good. On to the box set. <laughs> now this is a Lee box set. I've got one book out as you can see. Uh, ah, we all know what it is. It is the Oz series. So it's the Oz Complete Collection. And by the Complete Collection, what it means is it's the first 14 novels in the Oz series. That's all the novels written by L. Frank Baum, the original author who created Oz and Dorothy. So book one has three books in it, and that's obviously The Wizard of Oz, Marvin's Land of Oz, Loz, Oz and Ozma of Oz. Uh, book two is The Emerald City of Oz, The Road to Oz, and Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz. Uh, then there's The Patchwork Girl of Oz, TikTok of Oz, The Scarecrow of Oz. And book uh, one, two, three, four is Rinkitink in Oz, The Tin Woodman of Oz, The Lost Princess of Oz. And volume five has The Magic of Oz and Glinda of Oz. It also contains a 15th novel, which is The Royal Book of Oz, which was written by his successor to becoming the Royal Historian of Oz, Ruth Plumley Johnson. And that is all the books in that set. As you can see, they are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that picture of the Emerald City. So that's book two. This is obviously book one. I'm currently reading this to Jennifer. Uh, book three has a scarecrow on it. Book four has a Tin Woodman. Five has our lovely cowardly lion. Isn't he sweet? So those are all the books I got in June. As you can see, there's a lot of them. I'm really looking forward to them though. Um, my plan was to next year read, I was, my plan was to read the first three Oz novels this year and then next year read the last 12 as a challenge, but I, I, I'm revising that because of uh, reading them to Jennifer. It might take me a bit longer. So. Anyway, those are all the books I got. Which ones are you excited about? I'm, I'm excited about all of them. I can't wait. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There'll be another book haul at the end of July. Because I've already got uh, 12 books on that one, I think. Potentially. Definitely 11. Possibly 12. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, I have a book problem. It's true. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.